Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to talk about the singleton pattern in JavaScript and how to implement that within a React application. If you have not watched my first video, which was about constructor pattern in JavaScript, go there and check this video out and you will understand the start of this particular video because that is based on the previous video at some point, but I'm going to give you an overview anyways. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it as it really supports the channel and helps it grow. And without further ado, let's get started. So right now, I'm going to give you an overview of the app that we have. We essentially have this app JS inside which we are using this to-do list components two times. That's why you see it on the left and on the right. Then you will notice that inside this to-do list, we have some code that is already there. But if we go to this to-dos JS, that is the store where these to-dos are stored. For example, if I click here, you will see that we are adding some to-dos here. This is essentially coming from the to-do list component where we have this button and on click, we call this store.add to-do, which essentially adds this random to-do in this list and it then re-renders it using the set to do's method. Now, if I click on this add to do, this is now a separate instance of this to do's store. That's why this array is different and this array is different. So these two component instances have their own instances of the to do's store. They're not one, they're different instances. Now, in this video, we're talking about how to make a singleton. So we have only one store that we can share across with different projects. And there could be multiple great examples for this one. For example, if you use Redux or something like that, it's sort of a similar concept, but not exactly. But in here, we are going to talk about pure JavaScript and how we can use it within React. So first of all, we need to convert this to-dos class and the export from here to essentially a single instance. So we are going to do a couple of things. First, we are going to say const to-dos equals to empty array. So we are taking out this to-dos from here outside. Then we are going to essentially have a variable that we'll call instance. And here we are going to make sure that we keep only one instance of this to-do. So in this constructor, we are going to check if we already have an instance, which means that this class has been called or this class's constructor has been called only once. And we can do that simply by just saying if instance, which means that instance is not equal to null. So if it's not equal to null, then we know that the instance already created because we are creating it here. So we are saying this. Now, if it's already not null, which means that this line already executed, then we need to say something like throw new error. And then here we can say that you can only have one instance of to do's for example right and now you see this error as well and that is because here we have two to do lists actually trying to get this which essentially results in two different instances so if i comment this out save this and if i refresh this you can see that everything should be working but you can see that it won't be good if we have two of those right so i'm going to just refresh this and now let's talk about this one we are also going to just have a function called get instance and that should essentially just return the instance variable in this case and we are also going to change this dot to do's to to do's in this get to do's method and the add to do method. Finally, we are going to remove this to do's property. So now we can only use the uh, to do's array in this case. And instead of exporting this class, we are going to create a single instance, which is a singleton for this case right here. So it cannot be done anywhere else. So we can say something like const to do's instance. And here we can say something like new to do's. And then we can say object dot free. So we are freezing this. So no one can extend or modify any functions within this class. And then we are just exporting this to do's instance. Now that we have done this, we need to change a couple of things in the to do list component. First of all, we are not going to have any store like this. We're going to have the to do's array, but it's going to be a bit different. We're going to be passing the store as a prop in this component in the to do list. And we are then going to use the store dot get to do's and just assign this to the to do's in that case. Now, if I save this, you know that this is not being passed as a prop. So we need to do some magic here in this app. So here we can say something like import here to do's instance from and here we can say to do's and then we can say something like here we can say const a single instance of this so maybe we could do something like const to do's equals to do's instance something like this 
or we could also replace this and then what we can do is that we can essentially have that as a store within this component or actually cons we could say something like store set store and then here we can say use state there we can simply say to do's instance now you can see that we are using this store and now we can pass this as a prop here so store equals to store and then we can use the same thing right here into the next to-do list something like this and we need to import the use state here so we can say use state but in this regard and now we should be good so if i try to add to do's you can see that we can add them uh, you also see something weird and that is if i click here you can see that we got 128 and 19 here as well and then 298 here and also you see that if i click here now you will see the 298 and another one so here you can see these ones now this already shows that both of these components are actually using the same to do's array or the same to do's instance so we are good there but we need this to be fluent what i want is if i add here it should also be added here that kind of requires some re-rendering logic that we could talk about so i'm going to also pass the set store method just like this so we can use the set store method and do some magic there as well so i'm going to use this set store method and pass it like this and then inside the to-do list component i can also just use this set store method just like this and then what we can do is that i can actually copy this and here as it says set to do's instead of using the set to do's here i could call the set store and i can essentially do this so i could say something like hey when we do a set store we use the store as it is but then we also do to do's and here we say store dot get to do's and i can also just go ahead and do this so if i do this let's see what happens so i'm going to add a to do here it says get to do's is not a method and that is because we have store here i'm going to quickly check we do have a get to do's method here we are essentially doing an object spread here and that is why it's causing us some issues so instead of this store what i want to do is rather just get the to do's and the set to do's method from top so let's do that i could do something like to do's and set to do's in the app.js i can also do the same thing so here i could say something like to do's and here set to do's the whole store we could say something like get to do's just to initiate those and then we can pass these so to do's and we can say something like set to do's and we should be good now that we pass this we can actually get this one out we are already looping over the to do's and all we need to do is just now use the set to do's method so instead of this we can essentially do this so i'm going to copy this and here we can do something like store get to do's and then we are good so i'm going to use this array and finally instead of using this store because now we don't have store at all so what we need to do is that we also probably need to pass the store so i'm going to quickly go ahead and get the store as well so i'm going to go here and then i'm going to pass the store as the to-do instance so we can say something like this to do instance and here i'm going to pass this as well and now we can get the store and then use it as well so if i refresh now let's see what happens so i'm going to add this and you can see that this is added now on both sides i can go ahead and add here and you can see that they both are rendering at the same time and that is because we are adding and re-rendering the parent component in that case which essentially re-renders the child component as well i'm going to quickly go to the console and show you the data there as well so if i go ahead and add one to do here you can see that we get the to do's uh, which is essentially class logging the store here but rather we should be just logging the to do's so i'm going to log the to do's here and let's see now so i'm going to refresh this and now if i add this you can see that we got test to do 188 if i click this one we see the test to do 188 and that is because it is rendering the previous state of the to do's before setting the set to do's so we should rather do this so i'm going to do store.get to do's and this should be good now so if i click add to do you can see the three ones which is the latest state if i click this you see the four ones and this could go on and on and on now we know how to implement a singleton pattern in react and as i said before this is a very simple example you could make it work with different scenarios as well and there's one simplified version of this class that we just implemented instead of doing all of this hassle that we just did we could simplify it by just using let's say a simple object but before that i also want to show one more thing and that is what is this object freeze here 
if I go to app.js and if I try to say something like to do's instance dot add to do equals to function, see what happens. It says cannot add property add to do object is not extensible and that is because I cannot modify this particular instance because this is frozen. I could not add something else as well because it's the same thing that I'm trying to do. I'm trying to extend this object. So when we do object.freeze, we make sure that we are not able to add or modify any of the functions. I hope that makes sense. Now that we are talking about this, what I can do is that I can essentially go to to do's and before commenting all of this out, I could actually say something like const and here I could say to do's store, for example, and here I could create an object inside this object. I could replicate all of these functions and I don't need to do anything else. So I'm just going to do a comma here. All right. And this means I don't even need this constructor nor this instance property because this is always going to be the same constant. So I can essentially use object.freeze to do the store and export this to do the store. And I can now remove or comment out this to do's instance and also this whole class and also this instance variable. And if I do this, refresh this, it would essentially be exactly the same. Now you can see that a lot of this code is actually a lot less code. And the reason is that whatever we were doing is exactly the same thing. We had a class and then we created one instance of that class, which is essentially an object. So why don't we just create an object for this one and then use it as it is. Now, again, if I try to go here and try to do the same thing, you will see that we get the same error. And that is because this to do store is frozen. We cannot extend it. That's why we get the error. So now we are good. I hope you understood this one and I hope that this is going to be useful for you in your projects. Awesome. So I hope that you liked the video. If you did, press the thumbs up button, share this with your friends as well. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do it. As I said, it really helps the channel grow. If you have not joined our discord, you're missing out a lot. We do monthly meetups that we have recently started and we help each other out. And there are also channels for job opportunities as well. So make sure you find the link in the description and let me know in the comments, what design patterns should I be covering next? As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you in the next video.